low rider chair. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the City of Union Town's regular City Council meeting of May 2nd, 2024. Roll call. Uh, Council Councilman Billy? Here. Councilman Thomas? Here. Councilman Winfrey? Here. Councilman Brown? Here. And Mayor Kirkie? Here. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. An executive session was held today, Thursday, May 2nd, at um, 4.15 to discuss personnel matters. I um, have a few things to talk about here this evening. Um, cleanup day, last Saturday, a real successful event. It took place from 9 to 1 o'clock. We had over 20 volunteers. Um, the city provided t-shirts for all the workers, and it made us uh, all look to know what we, we were all doing. Um, picked up 15, over 15 um, ton of garbage, which is a good bit amount. That was, we had three garbage trucks here, and um, one was completely full. The other one was about three quarters full. We had another truck about a quarter full. So we had a really good participation, and, and I know we didn't get everything, but I think we put a dent in, into the city, and, and, it, and it was a really good time. Um, Saturday, the time went fast, and everyone seemed like they had a good time. Uh, we're planning another uh, cleanup in the fall, and um, so we'll look forward to get, getting more people out and having another good time. Um, something exciting has come come across my desk. Um, the street department is going to begin removing the tracks on Beeson Boulevard and down behind Caparellas. Um, they're going to start doing some preliminary work on this coming Monday, and. Um, then they're going to start removing the tracks the following Monday on the 13th from SWC Real Estate Office down to Church, Church Street. We'll keep the public updated on Facebook on road closures where, when the work is being performed. This is a big job and a big step in, in the job of completing the sheepskin trail throughout the city. That's been a big project of mine since I took office four years ago and it's, it's starting to come to fruition. Um, I don't know if, any, if, if anyone noticed, but I think you should drive by City Hall or City um, Workers this past week. Um, mulch the front and the sides of City Hall looks really nice. We put on a nice front for the parade and makes our, our City Hall building look 
you know, pre presentable. Um, it's talking about the May Day Parade. Um, it was another successful event. Um, Chief DeWitt was kind enough to drive me in the parade. We had uh, a good many people um, marching in the parade. And it was another chance to show the city off and a special thank you to the city police for keeping traffic moving. And, and we had some volunteers that really help every year and they, they go without recognition. But there's one gentleman, Brian Onesco, every, every parade he comes to me and asks me how much candy do I need. And he takes it out of his own pocket and makes sure that we have candy to, to throw out the windows and the people in the, on the streets really enjoy that. Um, farmers market's coming around. Uh, end of the month, it starts the last Saturday of, uh, of May. Um, every Saturday at Bailey Park at the new parking lot that we have on Pennsylvania Avenue from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, a special thanks goes out to Jason Scott and the South, U and South Union for opening the restrooms. It's right across the street at their new rec center, right across from where we're having the farmer's market. And uh, it'll be open for all the patrons before we had to use our restrooms and it's all the way across the park. So it makes it much more convenient. And, uh, and that's it. That, that, that's a nice gesture from South Union and we're continuing to, um, to grow a working relationship with South Union. They're our neighbors and we try to work hand in hand with them. Um, another special thank you goes out to Joe Walkus. I know he doesn't want, want this, but I think it's, it's necessary. Uh, Bailey Park, there was a baseball game that was Tuesday night, Laurel Highlands Union Town, and all afternoon it rained. And you would think that Bailey Park wouldn't be in the condition to play baseball, but Joe and his staff made that field ready to go. Now we did some work on the field that was minimal in cost versus what we had originally had thought. I think originally we had thought it would cost about $80,000 to make that field. So it would take water. Joe was able to work, work things out through, through private donations and we got that field up and running. And I thought that was a re really good, um, work that, that Joe did to get that ball field ready and, and I listened to WMBS radio that night and they were just saying what a beautiful setting it was. It, it, the sun came out and, but without Joe's hard work uh, that wouldn't have been, been a possibility. And a quick side note uh, as I'm speaking about Joe Walkus, about 8 o'clock that evening I received a phone call from someone in the city said that there was some trash down at Grant Street Park and that, that's normal. You know, it, it just happens. So I had called Joe and I said, hey Joe, can you get this handled for me tomorrow, you know, get it cleaned up. And that's Joe's job. Well, about a half an hour later, Joe calls me up and he says, hey Mayor, Grant Street's clean. So, and my response to Joe was, it must be three of you. So we have a real gem in Joe Walkus. And I just, I just really want to say thank you to Joe for everything he does for the city. And he goes up, uh, above and beyond, uh, above, above and beyond for us here in the city. Um, one last thing, I received the letter from the um, postal carriers. And I'll, I'll read this letter that, that they sent to me. Dear Mayor Gurdy, Saturday, May 11th, 2024 marks the 32nd anniversary of one of America's great days of giving, the National Association of Letter Carriers, Carriers Stamp Out Hunger Food Drive. So each year on the second Saturday in May, letter carriers across the country collect non-perishable food donations from our customers. These do donations go directly to local food pantries to provide food to people who need our help. And they, they asked me to um, lend your support by announcing the following at your next scheduled meeting. Participating in this year's Carrier Stamp Out Hunger Food Drive is simple. Just leave a non-perishable food donation in a bag by your mailbox on Saturday, May 11, and your letter carrier will do the rest. Please help us in our fight to end hunger as we celebrate our 32nd anniversary year in America's great day of giving. Sincerely, your local letter carriers. So don't forget on next Saturday to leave a non-perishable item out by your um, mailbox and the carriers, they say, we'll do the rest. That's about all I have this evening, thank you. All right, we will proceed into the regular agenda. Excuse me a minute. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, do we have any comments on agenda items only? If not, Mr. Witt, no, Thank you. Jump in the gun. Yes, sir. Um, we'll proceed in the regular agenda. Uh, item 105 is the, oh, that's the roll call. 105, uh, be it resolved by the City Council of City Uniontown 
to receive the report of the treasurer for the month of April 4th, 2024, being the same as hereby received and filed. Um, Council, Councilman Thomas? Yes. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Councilman Billy? Yes. Mayor Gerke? Yes. <clears throat> Be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown to accept the minutes of the April 4th, 2024 regular City Council meeting be in the same is hereby accepted and filed. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Councilman Billy? Yes. Councilman Thomas? Yes. Mayor Kirk? Yes. Be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown. The council hereby directs the director of accounts and finance to make payments of the following invoices for services rendered or products procured for the city of Uniontown. April 2024 invoices, general fund $90,851.18, sewer fund $7,228.03, recreation $787.20, recycling $667.28, Highway $3,314.85, Off Street $11,648.48, and Library $771.13. Uh, Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Councilman Billy? Yes. Councilman Thomas? Yes. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Yeah. Mayor Gerke? Yes. Be resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown. Uh, this is a request to authorize a refund in the amount of $29.17, um, and this is to Dustin Smith. Uh, Councilman Billy. So I will be abstaining uh, from this resolution and also the following resolution, so uh, 108 and also 109. Uh, and the reason for my abstention is due to uh, work conflict. Okay. Abstention, um, Councilman Thomas. Yes. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Mayor Kirk? Yes. Be resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown to adopt Bill Number 1777, Proposed Ordinance Number 1757, an ordinance of the City of Uniontown, Fayette County, Pennsylvania, memorializing, confirming, and reinstituting the per capita tax, repealing all consistent ordinances, and providing an effective date. I mean, again, just for, for council's iteration on this one, this is not changing anything. It's not a new tax. There's no tax increase associated with that. Just memorializing, memorializing something that's already on the on the books. Uh, Councilman Thomas. Yes. Councilman Winfrey. Yes. Councilwoman Brown. Yes. Councilman Billy. Uh, for this, uh, I'm abstaining for this. Uh, this is 109. Yes. And Mayor Gert. Yes. Thank you. Be resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown to approve the memorandum of understanding between alcohol, tobacco, firearms, and explosives in the Uniontown Police Department as presented. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Councilman Billy? Yes. Councilman Thomas? Yes. Mayor Gerke? Yes. Be resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown to move the position of street painter to be under the direct supervision of the City of Uniontown Police Chief. Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Councilman Billy? Yes. Councilman Thomas? Yes. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Mayor Gerke? Yes. Be resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown to approve the solicitor to prepare a job description for new management level position in the Public Works Department. Councilman Billy? Yes. Councilman Thomas? Yes. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Mayor Gerke? Yes. Be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown uh, to authorize the City Clerk to advertise for full time position in the Public Works Department. Uh, Council. Councilman Billy? Yes. Councilman Thomas? Yes. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Councilman Brown? Yes. Mayor Gerke? Yes. Um, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown to approve the Herald Standards Founding Day Festival 
to be held in the city of Uniontown on June 29th, 2024. Uh, Councilman Thomas? Yes. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Councilman Billy? Yes. Mayor Gerke? Yes. Be resolved by the City Council and the City of Uniontown to hire Terrence Price as the full-time code enforcement officer for the City of Uniontown at a starting salary of $40,400 annually. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Councilman Billy? Yes. Councilman Thomas? Yes. Mayor Gerke? Yes. Be resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown to approve the resignation of Terrence Price from the City of Uniontown Street Department effective May 6th, 2024. Uh, Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Councilman Billy? Yes. Councilman Thomas? Yes. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Mayor Gert? Yes. Be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown to approve the City of Uniontown to apply for the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency grant as proposed. Councilman Billy? Yes. Councilman Thomas? Yes. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Mayor Gerke? Yes. You're resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown to authorize the purchase of 300 t-shirts for the Summer Basketball League from Uniontown Printing Press at a cost of $2,250. Uh, Councilwoman, or Councilman Thomas? Yes. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Councilman Brown? Yes. Councilman Billy? No. And Mayor Gerke? Yes. Be resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown to approve the Uniontown Fire Department to apply for Pennsylvania State Fire Commissioner's Office Municipal Grant for facilities improvement as presented. Uh, Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Councilman Billy? Yes. Councilman Thomas? Yes. Mayor Kirk? Yes. Be resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown to approve the PA inspection and maintenance on the motor truck components of engine number two at a cost of up to $900 from Burnsworth's garage. Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Councilman Billy? Yes. Councilman Thomas? Yes. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Mayor Kirk? Yes. Be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown to approve the replacement of the power steering assist cylinder on the fire department ladder truck at a cost of up to $2,650 from Burnsworth's garage. Uh, Councilman Billy? Yes. Councilman Thomas? Yes. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Mayor Gerke? Yes. Be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown to approve the purchase of a pneumatic rock drill from Farnham and, and File rental for $1,559. Uh, Councilman Thomas? Yes. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Councilman Billy? Yes. Mayor Kirk? Yes. Be resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown to prove the hiring of the following five part-time seasonal employees in the recreation department at an hourly rate of $8 per hour for up to 25 hours per week, effective June 17, 2024. Cameron Watkins, Kellen Nilsson, Jameer Braxton, Calvin Winfrey, and Tori Grooms. Um, Councilman Winfrey. Yes. Yes, yeah, okay, so I'll 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 Yeah, I'll stay. So we have an abstention from Councilman Winfrey. Um, Councilman Brown? Yes. Councilman Billy? Yes. Councilman Thomas? Um, I'm gonna have to abstain to uh, let this one be. Yep. Okay. So we have abstentions from Councilman Winfrey and Councilman Thomas. Mayor Gert? Yes. Be resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown to approve the purchase of 10 radios at $3,754.40 and a web and repeater service for $499.50 per month 
from Rudick Communications LLC for the Public Works Department. Uh, so count before we go ahead and take a vote on, on this particular line item, you know, reviewing the budget, there, I don't see where we, we have this to be able to come out of the budget. Um, I, I would strongly urge m members of council, um, I'm going to make a motion to table this. So there's a motion to table. Is there a second to the motion to table? Second. I second it so we can just probably get a better option. Yeah, it needs to be tabled for sure. All right, so we have a motion to table and a second. Uh, this is on the motion to table this particular agenda item. Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Councilman Billy? Yes. Councilman Thomas? Yes. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Mayor Gerke? Yes. resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown to approve the purchase of materials to repair the water runoff at the Uniontown Volunteer Fire Department from Lowe's Home Center in the amount of $492.35. Uh, Councilman Billy. So this issue was brought up by the volunteers um, and I'm not exactly sure how long that this, this actually had, had taken effect. Uh, and at the same time, the city's really not aware of how much damage is actually uh, caused. Uh, but being that it is right, the building is right next to the parks, and that you know there is confirmed water runoff. Uh, you know this would be a project that the mayor and I had discussed, and, and that we believe this should move forward. Um, and at, at the same time, we we also uh, you know have an open door policy when it comes to our uh, uh, all of our departments and uh, and as well as the three companies uh, the volunteer companies um, if there's ever any issues uh, you know please you know let's not let time get in between that let's try to take care of that very quickly um, a lot more to say but I'm not going to say it, so yes Councilman Thomas? Yes. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Councilman Brown? Yes. Mayor Gerke? Yes. Be resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown to approve the purchase of street paint from Sherwin Williams in the amount of $1,339.50. Councilman Thomas? Yes. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Councilman Billy? Yes. Mayor Gerke? Yes. Be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown to approve the purchase of street sweeper parts from A&H equipment in the amount of $700.82. Councilman Winfrey? For, uh, oh, did you want to get clarification on that? Go ahead, please. Yeah, uh, just real quick, Johnny, what is this pertaining, what are we going to use this for? Because we did get a new street sweeper. Questions from council? Okay. Council Councilman Winfrey. Yes. Councilman Brown? No. Councilman Billy? No. Councilman Thomas? No. Mayor Gurkey? Yes. Be resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown to approve the American Cancer Society Relay for Life to place banners on decorative poles on Main Street from May 26th through June 26th, um, 2024. Uh, Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Councilman Billy? Yes. 
Councilman Thomas? Yes. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Mayor Gert? Yes. Be resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown to enter into an agreement between the City of Uniontown and the Pennsylvania Department of Labor and Industry in the Office of Vocational Rehabilitation, OVR, and Blind and Vision Rehabilitation Services of Uniontown, BVRS, in the My Work program. This is an eight-week program where local high school students will perform job-related duties ages 16 years up to 21 years old. Job trainers and job coaches will be on-site to supervisors to supervise. Wages will be provided by BVRS. Um, Councilman Billy? Yes. Councilman Thomas? Yes. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Mayor Kirk? Before I vote, I just want to say that last year we had this program and I wasn't real sold on it until I saw what John McCune and his staff did. I think it was a big addition to the city. They did a lot of work, and you can see it doesn't cost the city anything. And on top of that, they come with their own trainers, and Johnny's not their baby, as I used the term, babysitting. I'm in full accord with this. My, my vote's yes. To be be resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown to authorize the city clerk to seek bid specs for installation of camera systems at Penn Street and Church Street parking garages. Uh, Councilman Thomas? Yes. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Councilman Billy? Yes. Mayor Gerke? Yes. And that is all in the agenda, Mayor. Okay, very good. Thank you. Um, monthly reports, Department of Redevelopment Authority. Ms. Simmons? Good evening, Council. Our CDBG status meetings was held April 26th, which just is a slot available for your phone calls if you have questions. The next meeting is coming up on May 24th. And of course, I'm always upstairs if you need me. In, the, uh, in, in May, we're in May now, um, 2024 CBG first hearing will be held. Um, I'm projecting to, uh, to tentatively have that, that date as May 23rd, 2024. We're looking for a venue. Uh, we have a few different ideas. We want to be sure that it is out and available to the public and very accessible. So um, last year we had it at East End Community Center and had uh, around 14 or 15 people. So we really hope that if there's people in the community that have projects or um, any questions about ongoing CDBG projects or project requests that you want to use the CDBG funds for, I would really encourage you to attend that meeting and it will be uh, pushed out on our Facebook page and advertised in the newspaper. Competitive applications are still an opportunity once we finish surveys, which will hopefully soon be underway through summer. Um, the, uh, the surveys will need to be done by two people, so um, we're coordinating that soon. We'll have a code enforcement. Our quick glance uh, CDBG updates, we, we no longer, our modifications was submitted to the state. The state is satisfied. They have not issued the final modification, but they, um, they've collected everything they need from me. So these are the projects that are underway or be bid within the next couple months. Um, Lemon Street Playground, that project is pretty much complete. Signage is underway. Demolition, 80 and 82 Lemon will be the first demos and they'll be out to bid in the next couple weeks. That includes 55 Lennox, 84 Murray, 39 Winona. And the environmental review is complete on those projects and also the valuation certification, so we'll be opening bids. The code enforcement process is under review. We have <coughs> CDBG funds to fund code enforcement. And we're reviewing the process with Connellsville to kind of mirror the way that they do their code enforcement CDBG. It's really a time allocation and it's, it's went very nicely hand in hand with the new hire. Um, was great to hear tonight that, that we have 
that full-time code enforcement officer coming. So we're looking forward to um, working with him to get time allocations and, and start kind of hev heavily reviewing, reviewing code. Calvary United Methodist Church Playground uh, Redevelopment Authority has um, made the decision to receive that property as a donation and coordinate the operations and maintenance over the next um, few years. We have planned out a five-year projection on how we're going to maintain that property. Subrecipient agreements will soon be underway, and we also hope to bid that before the end of summer. Grant Street uh, restrooms and pavilion. I meet with the engineer May 9th to do the uh, to do the uh, a review of all projects that are ready for bid, which includes the the state theater as well. So those are two projects. We're just going to catch both of them in one meeting, and those also will be bid out in the next couple weeks. And then we have one voice, one community, which will be entering into a subrecipient agreement for for them to do their tutoring program. The engineering services, we're working with K2 Engineering, and again, we'll be meeting with Brian May 9th to discuss those upcoming projects. The sewage and transportation meeting is to be determined. Um, that date has not been set. We're, we're hoping to get a needs list from the sewage uh, department so to highlight some projects so then we can take a look at what funding we can pursue and I've been participating in those meetings but they've transitioned um, the city will be coordinating those sewage meetings until um, CDBG funds would apply the existing owner occupied housing rehabilitation the home environmental review record is complete and it's ready for mayor signature I hope to get that paperwork together and I'll be seeing you next week to get it get it signed off on. That means that we can start the existing owner-occupied housing rehab. We have a wait list of several that is now going to go through the scoring criteria and eligibility determinations to take those next steps. We've already started some USDA applications, which is a different program, but is a program that's available now that can help folks that either um, can afford and would like to proceed with a low-interest loan or those over the age of 62 that can receive a grant. The fair funding, we're still awaiting, uh, we're still awaiting uh, hopefully an award on that. We have been discussing that project with other uh, stakeholders in the community and we've gotten great reception. I hope to come back soon with a good report on, on coordinating that project. We have one sale under review, which is, kicks off our new app sheet property marketing and partnerships. All of our properties are now market, mapped online and available and soon will be on, on our website where the public and anyone can take a look at what properties we have. They're all GIS mapped and we hope to use that as our a marketing tool for adjacent landowners. So if there is a redevelopment authority that you live beside and you were interested in purchasing that, reach out. Soon we'll be marketing that. Story Square uh, does need an awning replacement. We have the request for proposals underway. We hope to advertise that in the next couple weeks <laughs> and get the bids on that to where we can try to get it taken care of before the Story uh, Square Summer Concert Series kicks off. We still are looking for sponsors for summer, uh, the summer concert series, and um, we are going to finalize some advertising by May 10th. Herald Standard has um, agreed to in-kind uh, sponsor, so they'll be handling all the um, in the Go magazine, all the bands and the vendors, and WMBS is also providing coverage for that event. Um, it's going to have a larger third Thursdays in June, July, and August on the third Thursday with some streets closed. The downtown business district is uh, meeting and reviewing business needs and how they can assist the collection of business license. We hope to partner with the city to put together some type of welcoming packet or resource 
um, exactly what the bylaws say that that authority should do. So we're, we're getting back on track. Uh, last month I reported the Keystone community designation. I've had the conversations with the state and they have kind of led me to the neighborhood assistance program rather than Keystone. So we're still looking at those grants. The Planning Commission meets May 8th and we will be reviewing the comprehensive plan and putting out the request for proposals for professional services so we can finish that plan and develop a scope and local meetings and citizen participation for everything that needs to go in that plan. We had hoped to have the landlord registration ordinance um, drafted and ready for review and approval, but as you're aware, you've not seen that. We're, we're not to that point. We still are working through the drafts and the final schedule of rates and um, incentives for that program. So we, we hope to come back to you in, uh, in June to, for that final approval. The Blight Remediation Task Force, last uh, month you appointed members. We will have our first blight, uh, task force meeting, what's well, tentative, May 29th, so I'm reaching out to those members to schedule the meeting. And um, well, we'll put an RFP out for that too in the next couple weeks to get a professional to come in and help us with that project. And we're standing by for our next welcoming the legislators. We hope to meet with Guy Rushenthaler to review um, any appropriations or authorizations or line items in the budget that we could maybe have for our sewage needs. And then last, I just wanted to mention again the strategic management planning program. It's a great opportunity for the city and the state has reached out and offered to come and put on a presentation for council to review what this uh, program could do for the city. Um, there are many things that I've seen myself that I think it would be very helpful for. They can provide, uh, it's a 50-50 grant program. They can even help you with audits. If you don't have the previous audit done, they will pay for half of your audit to be completed. They will help you with training and capacity building activities. They will uh, review your organization, your structure, your technology, and they will put this recommendation together in a plan that would then line you up for funding later. For instance, the technology in the city uh, should be updated. It should be reviewed. It's very antiquated. Um, I think most of the staff would definitely be more efficient with the technology, and that's what this grant could do. It would review it. It would identify what the needs are, and then you take the next steps, and you can apply for the next grant. So um, George Newsom, which you've met before, um, he was very excited to come back, so I hope we can schedule that with council. And any questions? So, I, Crystal, just to, to give you an update on our end, it, uh, I did speak with council uh, on this, uh, with getting Mr. Newsom uh, scheduled on the books. Um, <coughs> so really, it, it, if you can go ahead and spearhead that uh, and get a time that's going to be good for all of us, we also want to have the solicitor involved. I mean, we're very interested. Um, I think that the, in the beginning, the, the, the first time that uh, Mr. Newsom was in town, I don't think we could all meet. Uh, I, my schedule was definitely a conflict. Uh, just speaking for myself on that. Um, it, but I, I think it, is, it, it, it was an awesome uh, description of what he presented uh, at our first meeting. Um, and I think that it, it's something that the entire council should be privy to this knowledge. And I, I just think it, it could really work out in a lot of the conversations that we had. Um, especially getting into the, you know, the technology end of it, um, uh, and really, you know, the audit, you know, our audits will be, you know, coming coming back around, and uh, we're going to be budget time again. So any help that we can actually get for, uh, you know, the people in the office is going to be good. I'd like to also move in a direction where um, we have talked about this when you first came on, uh, getting the, all the departments' technology in line getting us all on, you know, using, um, uh, you know, a house crew server uh, to just down to using the same company to buy printer paper. Um, you know, I think that, that that's something that we definitely need to, to move forward on. So um, I just want to let you know that because I, I know that you, you've 
had some emails coming back and forth, and maybe there was a delay on my part as well uh, getting back to you. But I just I want you to know that that I have not lost interest in it, and, and I want to see that happen quickly. It seems like the best time for all of us to get together is wrapped around the meetings. Um, again, it's just you know just speaking for myself again on that, um, but. I think that you know, with everybody's schedule, everyone has a wrapped around the meeting. So, if, if George's, if Mr. Newsom's um, schedule does permit him to do that wrapped around the meeting, that'd be great. That's perfect. It's part of our economic development cooperation agreement. So, now that I know that everyone's in the same direction, um, it's on. Thank you. All right, I mean, does anybody you. else on council have anything different to add to that, or maybe have a different perspective on that? Okay. All right, we'll do. Thank you. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you. You can tell fire department chief Kwan. Uh, all right, good evening, uh, Mayor and Council. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I guess I should have waited before I got up to the mic. As I said, good evening, Mayor and Council. Good evening, everybody. I uh, always like to start out with a rundown of our incidents for the past month. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the Uniontown Fire Department responded on the following incidents for the month of April 2024. Uh, this was 10 fire-related incidents. These included four building fires, two kitchen fires confined to the stovetop, two trash fires, two brush fires, and one smoke scare, but no active fire occurred. Uh, we had 19 rescue related incidents, 10 of these being motor vehicle collisions, six of those with injuries. Uh, we have one vehicle collision resulting in entrapment, five lockouts or gain access for EMS crews, um, and two extrications of an ill or an injured person from a building. We had seven hazardous conditions incidents. These included one gas leak, two power lines down, two electrical emer emergencies involving electrical equipment, uh, one miscellaneous hazardous condition um, and one building collapse and that was a pretty significant one too so we were there pretty much most of the evening. Uh, we had four service related incidents including one general public service assistance call, two lockouts and one cover assignment for another fire company to where our crews stood by and handled their area. We had 17 fire alarm activations we had four severe weather related incidents. Those were all flooding this time. Uh, fortunately, no wind, but you know, water's just as damaging sometimes. And uh, finally, we had two, uh, excuse me, two public fire education and fire prevention details. As always, these include our uh, pre planning of the building, um, staff training, building familiarization as well. Uh, secondly, always outline our training that was either conducted or taken by our personnel for the month. The department had 125.5 man hours of training for the month of April. And uh, now that the weather's breaking, or our guys love to train, you know, it'd be, so we, we take that opportunity as much as we can. So it's pretty good numbers. I'm very proud of that. Um, Apparatus and equipment updates. Last month, you folks had uh, approved for the NFPA industry standard testing for our breathing apparatus or for our breathing air compressor um, and for air samples. They did the first phase of that this past month. They did the uh, compressor. Uh, there will be two more tests throughout the year. That's already budgeted in with that, too. We'll send air samples to make sure that the air quality is good. Um, as you voted on tonight, and thank you for that, our engine number two is going to be scheduled for PA state vehicle inspection and uh, maintenance of the motor and truck components, and we are going to get the leaking power steering cylinder fixed on the ladder truck. Um, finally, a couple of miscellaneous things, and we had some really good news to share with everybody. I had reported last month that our department was entering into, an agree in, into a um, partnership with the American Red Cross for their Sound the Alarm smoke detector campaign. Last month we had the first install event and it was a big success. We installed 126 detectors in the city of Uniontown. Uh, included with that also is a brief education and safety program that we give those occupants as well. Um, good news is we're gonna be partnering up with them 
again in the future too. So I think that's going to be moving forward. I think it's going to be a really, really good thing. So, um, also, I'd reported last month that uh, our Uniontown Walgreens donated 36 cases of drinking water in an effort to help keep our personnel hydrated. Um, important throughout all, all times of the year, but especially in the summer, too. Um, well, their generous and kind act actually had a very nice trickle-down effect. Do -do, shh, get it? Okay, water. Anyway, all right. Um, so a number of folks in our community have brought water down as well and donated them to us. Um, this is really appreciated. So thanks to Walgreens. Uh, Hillary Griffith is a, a big spearhead with that. Um, it's very helpful. And thanks to all the folks in the community that donated water to us. If anybody feels free, you know, feels like they would like to, feel free to drop it off down at Central Fire Station. So um, speaking of water, Grant Street. Uh, folks are going to be playing some new trees down there at Grant Street Park, May 11. Uh, you can count on our department. We'll be down there to water the new trees. We think it's a real nice, real nice project. So, yep, we'll be there. Um, let me see. Just another rem reminder, residential Knox box applications, we've kind of been pushing that program. Those can be obtained at Central Fire Station as well as for commercial ones, which we've had for years. Um, another nice thing that we just lined up the other day, um, and actually the Pennsylvania State Police is going to be conducting this one. We're more or less just going to be providing base space, uh, but the, CA, the PA State Police's team of uh, child seat installers, they're going to be there on May 16th, and that's going to be from 2 to 6 p.m., so if folks need to come out and get a seat installed or get their seat checked, uh, their folks are going to be using our apparatus bay and uh, from the Uniontown Barracks, so come out and they'll, I'm sure, be glad to check out your car seat. Um, and lastly, um, I always end, yeah, same way every week. Uh, jackpots, the early bird jackpots up to 2,500 tonight. If you're going to get there, you better hurry up though. So um, starts at 6:45. Anybody have any questions or comments? No. Okay. Uh, actually, Chief. Um, yeah. So being that summer is here, is pretty much here, the warmer weather. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be looking to get a schedule. Put together for a, a monthly clean out of the garage and mm -hmm. I would like the fire department and the street department to work together on that. Okay. So coming forward that's that's something that's going to be we're going to be looking to have that cleaned out um, once a month mm -hmm. while we have the good weather. Okay. So I just wanted to let you guys know uh, ahead of time before we before the emails start rolling out. Okay. Thank you. All right no problem. Thank you Chief. Uh -huh. Police Department Chief DeWitt. Mayor, Council, thank you. Good evening, everyone. So just so, uh, for the sake of being transparent here, the PCCD grant that we wrote for, we're hoping to hit the lottery again um, on another grant. That grant is a zero match grant. Uh, we'll get into discussions later if we're going to use a grant rate or not when I get into the nitty gritty of what this grant's going to require. Um, but this grant is to, the last grant we hit was for technology. All right, so the FBI is changing the way that the standard reporting is done. We currently use a UCR system. That system is being phased out to a more accurate reporting system, which is called NIBRS. So this grant is specifically for NIBRS reporting, um, which we don't have, which I'd like to get us on board for. So that's what that one's for. I hope we can work that one out. And the uh, everyone probably questioning what the ATF is for. That is for crime suppression. Um, the more three-letter agencies, and everyone's familiar, at least that we have the FBI involved currently in the city. Uh, we have this massive uh, working relationship with the Pennsylvania State Police, and now we're going to expand that even further with the Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms Division of the federal government. Um, it'll make an impact. So I'm going to go into the monthly uh, meeting or monthly stuff I have, and then I'll just move forward from there. So during the month of April. The Uniontown Police Department responded to 772 calls for service. A breakdown of some of those calls included 14 vehicle accidents, three assaults, nine frauds, 20 welfare checks, 45 domestic violence incidents, one assist fire call, 20 disorderly conducts, 40 traffic complaints, 22 emergency medical assists, 18 assist other police departments, 20 harassments, three shots fired, 13 alarms, 21 thefts, six public intoxications, 
18 animal complaints with 74 suspicious persons, activities, or vehicles. Uh, also included were two overdoses. Um, last month, uh, at the end of the month, towards the end of the month, our officers were dispatched to a cardiac arrest um, off of Wayne Street, in the area of Wayne Street. Bystander CPR probably saved this guy's life. Our officers got there, um, immediately went to the back. Myself and another officer, Sergeant Hanley, took over CPR immediately. We assisted EMS through that process. They put, EMS put the mail on the Lucas device within minutes, uh, which is an automatic, uh, AD, an automated machine for chest compressions. I don't know this guy's status, at least at this point, I'm not dug any further, but the last check in the days after, they, he, he was dead when we got there and he was alive the next day and they, didn't, they expected him to make at least a full recovery. I'd like to research that to find a little bit more because that kind of hits home a little bit for, for anyone that's ever seen that. So kudos to EMS and our guys for taking charge on that one. Um, officers made a total of 41 criminal arrests issued 40 non-traffic citations and 115 traffic citations. We conducted vehicle and foot patrols in the city parks, as well as Sheepskin Trail and the parking garages. Um, I'm beyond thankful for you guys for voting to put cameras in the garages. Uh, there, you guys made an investment, what was that, a year ago? Uh, you put hundreds of thousands of dollars into parking machines uh, for those garages. One of those machines this past, within the last two weeks, uh, was damaged. Uh, probably substantially damaged and yeah. no suspects we patrolled it hit it and then six hours later it came back and we discovered that the machines were damaged so the cleaning of the garages having more people in the garages patrols the cameras will add a major benefit in return and the city also posted those no trespassing which our guys are going to be enforcing anyone that's not parked in their garage if you're found in the garage loitering you will be arrested Uh, that's that's not me. Uh, that's a conversation you all will need to have to have on what you, what's going to happen there. But I do believe that killing your power outlets in your garages um, along your city parks that's going to deter a lot of the stuff you're dealing with and getting posted. You know the dust of dawn law rules. I believe that passed. Um, that needs posted and put up, and that'll help us give us some teeth rather than just going in and telling someone to leave, we'll actually have teeth to enforce it because they're, po they're disobeying a posted trespassing sign. So, yeah, we'll deal with that whenever it gets all squared away. But I agree, the outlets, there's a cost to that, right? But that, that would help. And finally, uh, I'm very glad that you guys put a full-time code enforcement officer on. It, <laughs> we, we were a bridge, the police department was a bridge for code enforcement when we lost Matt Thomas. Um, I'm glad to say we've crossed the bridge and now someone else can keep building it. We're going to assist him, walk him through that process. He's going to be working out of our building. Um, I sat through these interviews, the mayor sat through these interviews, and Crystal sat through these interviews. Terrence Price is one of the, I don't, there's no way to put it, he's one of the most stand-up people I've ever met. And he is going to do this city well. And thank you for hiring him. That's all I have, Mayor Council. Appreciate you. Thank you, Chief. Director of uh, Public Works. Mr. Paul Lewinsky. Chief. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, first off, I'd just like to echo what the mayor had to say at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, Next week, we will be starting some preliminary work to remove the rails on Beeson. Uh, as we're working in the intersections or the blocks, we will be closing down block to block as we move down the street in the process. Um, next week, it'll just be short road closures for a few hours, but the following week will be an actual removal of the rails and the closure for the block will be approximately one to two days to remove the rails and then pave the ditch line that they lay in. Uh, we expect the project to take a month and a half to two months. So if all the citizens can be uh, patient with us as we work our way through downtown, I know it's a busy street and it'll uh, cause some issues with people travel and downtown businesses, but we'll do our best to get all the citizens to where they need to be. Uh, the city sewage collection report for this month, they took in 
$230,354.07, bringing this year to date collection to $854,816.80. Uh, the girls in the sewage office, just to echo as I always say, they're always busy when I walk in and answering the phone and take care of the people at the window and I go in and bother them with my little issues and they fit me in to take care of whatever I, questions I have. Uh, the compost site's in full swing. We're doing our best to keep up with lawn collection and everybody's doing winter clean up in that. Um, the compost site's a demanding site keeping up with three pieces of equipment, maintenance and operations. Uh, we do our best to keep up with everything with collection and processing the material. Um, I'd like to congratulate Terrence Price on his new position. As uh, Chief DeWitt said, he's a stand-up guy. He was a good employee, and I hope to see him do well in his new position. He'll be missed in the street department. He was a good fit with those guys, and he'll be missed. Um, I'd like to thank council for approving the new hires to advertise. Now we can start the interview process and uh, re-advertise and hopefully get some applicants in. We're in dire need of help. Uh, over the past four years, the crew's been cut in half just from people passing away in retirements. But hopefully we're able to fill some positions here and get some help. The sewage guys were actually out last night on a break until 9 p.m. and help would have speeded the process up with that and be able to complete projects in a more timely matter. Um, really, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, John. I have the time now for public comment. Um, I'm sure everyone has read the uh, notices on the door. Keep your, uh, keep your comments brief, let everyone have a chance to talk and be respectful of one another. We have a three minute time. I know. So at this time, I'll entertain public comment. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm just here. My name's Kelly Trott, and I just wanted to thank Council for um, hearing the concerns of the residents on Virginia Avenue, getting the traffic study done, and uh, for the um, installment of the stop signs. They've made a tremendous improvement on our street. Um, I, I think that's also echoed at Barton Mill, if I'm correct. So just wanted to thank you for um, hearing our concerns and taking action. And I was late, but um, just putting a plug in that it's May and it's time for the farmer's market at the end of the month. May 25th is our kickoff weekend. Um, the Parks and Rec Board's been working hard on it, so we just hope the community comes out. We'll be there all summer until September 28th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Okay, thank you. Thank, thanks, Kelly. Thank yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. State your name and your address, please. Um, um, I was just wondering where I can get written um, regulations regarding residential handicapped placards that are put up. Go ahead, Chief. Yeah, so you got to take from our secretary, uh, Jody Gitto. Um, she's, I mean, it's, she's available. It's easy to get over if you need to. Um, I think we We have those, those permits go through our station. May I ask you, do they have to have delineation lines along the bottom? We do not paint the streets for handicapped spaces, to my knowledge, because they are, um, you know, not saying it's not going dark, unfortunately. Pardon me? It stays forever in a residential area. It's you dark, know, oh. Handicapped classes may not be around as long as the paint is around. Well, just because there's ambiguity as to where it begins and ends. So, um, oh, yes, that was me. Yeah, I in the middle of the day, I get a knock at my door that I'm encroaching on a newly erected sign, um, and it seems a little like there's some ambiguity. So, I would like some clarification. 
can I, can I see you after? Or can I... Thank you. Um, any other public comment this evening? If not, that's all I have. Uh, be resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown. The Council hereby adjourns to meet June 6th, 2024 at 5 o'clock p.m. Uh, Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Councilman Billy? Yes. Councilman Thomas? Yes. Mayor Kirk? Yes. Thank you all for attending.